The gateway into the lung, through which most important structures enter and exit, is known as the hilum. The lung hilum lies medially on the lung's mediastinal surface. There is one hilum per lung, and they lie around the T5 to T7 vertebral levels. This video is sponsored by Kenhub. Find out more at the end of the video. Let's start by looking at the right hilum. The left hilum is really similar with only some subtle differences. We'll look at the left hilum specifically in a minute. Here we are looking at the mediastinal surface of the right lung. This is anterior and this is posterior. We see this big indentation where the heart sits known as the cardiac impression. This groove is where the azygous vein sits. This is the groove for the esophagus and this is the hilum here. We call the contents of the hilum the lung root and this collection of structures is the only thing that connects the lungs to the contents of the mediastinum. The lung root is surrounded by an infolding where the parietal and visceral pleurae of the lung meet. At its inferior part, this infolding continues downwards as a narrow band of connected tissue known as the pulmonary ligament. Just anterior to the hilum of the lung runs the phrenic nerve, which starts up in the cervical spine and passes down through the mediastinum to supply the diaphragm. Accompanying this are the pericardiophrenic vessels. And just posterior to the hilum is the mighty vagus nerve, which starts all the way up in the brain and travels down the body to supply a huge range of structures including the heart and bowel. Let's zoom in a bit on the right hilum. Firstly, we can see the right pulmonary artery, which sits in the most superior part of the hilum. This is a direct branch of the pulmonary trunk of the heart and carries deoxygenated blood from the body towards the lungs. The pulmonary artery will later branch into the superior, middle and inferior lobar arteries and eventually their segmental branches. Next we have the two large right pulmonary veins. Most inferior is the inferior pulmonary vein, which takes blood from the inferior lobe of the lung, and most superior is the superior pulmonary vein, which drains blood from the superior and middle lobes. Both of these take freshly oxygenated blood from the right lung and join directly to the left atrium, where the blood is then pumped to the rest of the body. Via these veins, the heart is anchored in place in the mediastinum. Sitting in the posterior superior part of the hilum are the bronchi. Depending on how we cut the model, we should be able to see the start of the right superior lobar bronchus superiorly and the bronchus intermedius inferiorly. Remember that these are the first branches of the right main bronchus which is the conduit for air into and out of the right lung. You may occasionally see the superior lobar bronchus referred to as the ep arterial bronchus as it arises above the pulmonary artery and the bronchus intermedius as the hyp arterial bronchus as it arises below. Supplying blood to the bronchi is the bronchial artery which branches from the descending thoracic aorta and draining a small volume of blood from the bronchi is the bronchial vein. Lastly, there are some small and inconsistent bronchopulmonary lymph nodes that lie within the hilum. Okay, now let's put that side by side with the left lung hilum. We can see that the structure of the left hilum is broadly similar, with the pulmonary ligament here, the phrenic and vagus nerves here, and the cardiac impression here. Additionally, we see this deep groove for the arch of the aorta, which runs down the left side of the mediastinum. Just like the right hilum, in the left we see two pulmonary veins, one inferior and one superior. The pulmonary artery, which lies superiorly, and the superior and inferior lobar bronchi as they branch off the left main bronchus. On the left side we typically have two bronchial arteries and one bronchial vein. And lastly, we have the bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. We've just covered a lot of anatomy, and if you're looking for a way to consolidate what you've learned, I've got something that can help. For this video series, I've partnered with KenHub, one of the most comprehensive anatomy learning platforms I know of. I've used it since med school, and I still utilize their content when preparing my scripts and animations today. With the KenHub Premium Plan, you'll get access to their structured study units, like this one on the peripheral nervous system. Each study unit includes comprehensive video tutorials with transcripts, closed captions, and playback controls, space repetition quizzes designed to help you memorize tricky content long term, a dedicated exam mode that simulates test conditions and gives you instant feedback, and best of all, the custom quiz tool, which helps you focus on your weak areas and build tailored quizzes to practice.
You also get access to beautifully illustrated atlases, detailed muscle anatomy reference charts, and 24-7 support from Kenhub's Anatomy Geeks, who are trained anatomists ready to help you when you need it. If you want to try Kenhub Premium for yourself, more than skin deep viewers get 10% off through the link in the description. Give it a go and support the channel while you're at it. This is the second of a three-part series on the anatomy of the lungs, so remember to subscribe to the channel so you can catch the next and final part when it comes out. In the meantime, I hope you learned something and have a great day.